So today we're talking about movement as water. Uh, Bruce Lee had a very famous quote, be like water. And what we're trying to draw the analogy from is we're gonna use the example of bunions. So uh, let's write up here a little bit of Bruce Lee's quote. We'll just say be water instead of be like water. So I explain this a lot in our clinic talking about movement dysfunction and how human movement is gonna take the path of least resistance, much like if I have a a boulder or a rock in a stream, and as the water flows, it's gonna diverge around that. It's gonna take the path of least resistance. That is much like what happens with old injury, movement dysfunction, restriction, surgery in the human body. So if we look at something like a bunion, which is really common in our society, which if we just look at this little foot and we think of a bunion having a little kick, right? So that would be hallux abducto valgus. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell, right? But what that means is this is your hallux, it's abducted and it has a valgus load through that first ray, right? Or coming off of that first metatarsal. So let's talk about just a little bit of why that's occurring. Could be a lot of reasons. Could be footwear, right? So let's draw our foot up here. So we've got our four lateral toes and then our big toe is angled in. I like to finish it off and make it look like a bear paw. That's the human foot. So we got this angle. Well, most of our shoes tend to be angled like that. There's never been a baby born that their foot looked like that. It's gonna be wider at the top, skinnier at the bottom. It's obviously not squared off. We got these little nubs up here, right? We play a little piggy with. Um, so we start to change it through footwear. We start to change it through other injuries, right? Uh, possible knee injuries, hip injuries, stiffness. And it becomes really a chicken or egg question of how the bunion formed doesn't matter because the, because the bunion becomes the stone which the water moves around. So what happens when we start changing those mechanics? A couple things. Your big toe for walking, in particular running, needs about 60 degrees of extension. We would also call that dorsiflexion. It gets confusing, right? But big toe extension or dorsiflexion is needed. And then we need about 30 degrees if we move up to your tibia of dorsiflexion of tibia over ankle mortis joint. And those two things together wind up the Achilles and the plantar fascia. And this looks like our shape up, sketcher shape up shoes for our behind. Um, this winds up the plantar fascia that's called the windlass mechanism. Now, if I can't do one or either one of those or both together, the water starts to diverge. And if I'm looking head on at somebody's knee, like if I was coming at you like this, what we start to see is that we're gonna create angulation. So if you've ever seen, maybe uh, this is really typical and we're not being sexist here, and a young female athlete, when they take off the jump, sometimes they'll have this valgus load because that's how we're finding stability. But we'll see this in a lot of runners, adult runners, youth runners. And what we're seeing is that they've changed the angle of push. So if we have a toe that if I'm, again, now looking down at a foot like this and that toe goes in, you can imagine I'm gonna to start to wanna to roll off the inside of that foot a little bit more, which is gonna send the knee inside and then can wreak havoc upstream on the knee itself, even around the foot, causing things, obviously like pain associated with bunion, turf, toe, plantar fasciitis, all these things. Now this can happen anywhere in the body. We're just specifically using bunions as that. So once we figure out, okay, maybe I came into somebody with knee pain or hip pain and we're trying to explain this upstream and downstream movement uh, dysfunction, we can use Gray Cook's model of stability, mobility, and how that jumps from joint to joint. So your big toe should be mobile, your foot should be stable, your ankle should be mobile, your knee should be stable, your hip should be mobile, and it keeps going. It's a very black and white way to look at it, but it's, it lets us understand it a little bit. So when we see that those start to shift, all we have to think is, how do we get them back to how they're supposed to be? So in this scenario, it's not necessarily a mobility issue of that foot or that toe that's facing inward now, it's more of we have to actually change structure, change the dynamic structure. So the first question that we need to ask is, is that bunion reducible? Can we actually pull your toe back, right? Does it move back if I was to pull? Can we create space or is it stuck? And you see those big arthritic, osteoarthritic calcifications that occur. If it's reducible, we can start using things like toe spacers, intrinsic footwork, things like that. But let's take all the specifics out of it and just think of, let's say it's my knee that's stiff, my hip, my upper back, whatever, whatever the movement impediment is, whatever the stone in the river is, we don't want to blow up the dam, right? I don't want to send 
TNT in here and blow this thing up because if you ever tried that in a river, you're going to create a bunch of silt and sediment that's going to go downstream. It's going to clog the stream and now you don't have a stream, you got a lake. It's not what we're trying to create. We're trying to create movement through the rock, right? So what does a river do over time? It wears this rock down until eventually it's pebbles and then it's sand and then it's a nice beach, right? How do we do that? We do that through what's called greater exposure, right? And greater exposure basically means a little bit at a time. In my world, when somebody comes into my office, how we're giving them access to greater exposure is through relief. So that's where we would use things like adjusting, uh, myofascial release, uh, all sorts of stuff. Voodoo floss, foam rolling, cupping, acupuncture, dry needling. These are all symptom overrides. Some are symptom modifiers. Some are actually changing tissue states. But even things like diet, hydration play into how your tissue is going to work. But it's a little bit at a time, not throwing TNT in. And the equation would be the, the twos, right? We've heard of the terrible twos for kids. But we don't want to do too much, too soon, or too often. So what's that mean? I can't have you foam roll for an hour. It's not going to change anything. Can't have you do mobility drills for an hour. You're probably going to cause pain or an injury. But I also can't do it too soon. So this is the thing that I think people expect when they come into our office. You're going to adjust me. You're going to do some things and stuff's going to change. Well, did it take a long time to create this bunion that we think we got from grandma? Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time to correct it. And while we're talking about grandma, let's talk about the hereditary component of bunions. It's not true. So there is not a hereditary component to bunions. What we would say, there's a hereditary component to how your foot works. And then you walk similarly to your family or run, maybe not so hot. And pretty soon you get mechanical change around that hallux joint, right? And then we get that Harry Potter spell again. So what are we, how are we going to sum this up? Uh, we know we want to be like water, right? Movement is our expression as humans of what our CNS is trying to project to the world. If I have an impediment, a large boulder, a stone, a movement restriction, an old injury, surgical site, things like that, I've got to slowly wear down at that rock through my tools, whether that's somebody doing to me, me doing to myself. And then once I have access to better ranges of motion, right? So let's say I get all of these toes nice and lined up with space in there. I've got to start getting this to move. And we talked about what's necessary. That's 60 degrees of big toe extension, but then everything else got to move. The ankle, the knee, the hip. So again, if we talk about Greg Cook, he always says, don't attack a stability or don't attack a mobility problem with stability drills or exercises. So if I can't move the toe, a lot of times thinking that I'm going to strengthen something or change a movement is for naught. So first things first, make sure you have adequate movement. Is that bunion reducible? And then get to work on graded exposure, breaking down the pain relationship to movement. Hope you guys learned something.